Halloween video. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed. Let's get started with this meat. Yes, this meat. So, for my friends that wanted to do a little video and you guys wanted me actually to come over and many of you requested that to help you learn how to do some canning, I thought I'll just do a little video for you and make it a little easy for you. Anyway, I have a boneless pork loin here. That's a big one. It's a it's a big one. You've seen them before. And I'm going to go ahead and can it up. Um, I have some pint jars for all of our newbies here. Pint jars. This is a wide mouth. Now you could also use a um, small mouth or regular mouth jar. That's totally fine. I've got many of my canning when I have meat in it. Use a spoon, dig it out. It's no big deal. Okay, so I'm going to be canning this up. But just to go over for our newbies that really don't know anything about canning at all, this is a Presto canner. I think it's the best one as far as to start with um, right away if you're new. It's not too challenging to work with it right away. So right here we have the, our canning area. This right here is a divider. Most of the time you need two of this if you're going to double stack um, like today. I do not have a second one of these to do a double stack, but I can jury rig something really quick to use if I double stack today. Um, so you go to the side. You have to have that at the bottom of your, your jars. And as far as your lid goes, you can see it's been very loved. There's a little ring gasket around the inside. Plastic make sure it's all good and ready to go. I'm going to put this over out of the way for right now. You're going to start on the meat here in a second. <laughs> Let me wash my hands. This real we'll quick. talk about this later. So let's get this meat cut up and then I will be back. Yeah, my mom's right now getting the meat ready. I don't know if I'm gonna be helping with raw meat. <laughs> I've been helping my I've been helping my mom before a long a bit. So just so you guys can see right here, I, there's a lot of fat right here. Now you can leave this in. It's not recommended that you use a lot of fat in it, but it is pork loin. I know it's you know on the um, drier side when it gets cooked. So I like the extra fat in my meat, but you can definitely take it off and trim it off. No, no big deal. So you need to put um, a scoop of the seasoning. Just one scoop and then flatten it out, or just leave it. Um, so I'm having a conversation. You can flatten it out, that'd be fine. Okay. Go start with the salt first. Do salt, um, do all the jars with salt first. Then add the other seasonings. Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah, flatten out, that would be good. Now, you can have, you have the option to also leave it without any seasoning. I just don't prefer meat to be cooked without any seasoning. You use any seasoning you want. Right here, I have like a, a southwestern kind of blend, you know, cumin, paprika, some paprika. I'm gonna add some more oregano. Add some. Um, Is it okay salt. if I mix them together? It has garlic. Too. So if you can't see these are about they're about this size. Whoops, some more fat on there, which I'm gonna leave. Like I said. put all the seasonings in that we're going to use and like I said mine's like a southwestern blend this just goes great with pork and easy and has wonderful flavor just to let you know like if it's your first time ever like canning and you've never you know used any of these jars you need to do need to check, you do need to check for any the rims make sure there's no any cracks if you have cracks in your rim or in like little divots you might not even realize you run your finger across it your you will not get a seal at all this will not seal and then you will just have a lot of work for nothing. You'll have to just use that food right away. So it's really important. Now, I am doing a raw pack. Now, see there's so many different ways to, to can, right? But just focusing on this style is a raw pack, which means you don't have to pre-cook it. It can be cold. Everything's gonna be cold. The water that we're gonna put in, the in our canner is cold. The jars are gonna be cold. The meat's gonna be cold. You want it to be all pretty much the same temperature. So we're gonna fill it up. <coughs> right here, you wanna fill it up. Come on, be brave. Use your hands. Get dirty. She usually struggles with this part. She never likes to touch the raw meat. You want to try again? Bye. See? <laughs> All right. So you do that part, Mom. You can put gloves on. I don't. I don't put gloves on. So when you fill it, you do need an inch of headspace. Now, if you're feeling, I've been doing this a long time, I can get away with not doing that, but I would say for you newbies, don't do that. So you wanna squish that baby down there. Now, another option. 
You could put broth in here if you wanted, like water. It's gonna make you a great broth. Or you could use broth, bouillon cubes, whatever you want, and put that as flavor in there and have a broth with it. I'm doing a raw pack with no broth. I like it to just be in its own juices. Sometimes I actually do have some that are not. I could show you one of those later. But um, this is definitely a great way to do it. I think I'm gonna throw some more in there. Just a tiny Shove bit, as not as too I can much. In there because I have a lot of meat here. This is how much I love my mom. Oh. So we moved on. We've got this all done here. We've got them all packed up. So now the next thing you need to do, it's really important, is to clean your room. So you just take some simple vinegar. I've got some white vinegar here. Just take this and you're going to wring it around here because you know we've touched them with all sorts of stuff. Just a little bit of grease and fat in our meat. So I'm going to clean that off. All the room's got to be cleaned off. Now, when you're tightening these bands, don't tie it really tight. You need to be able to get this, some of the air out, right? That's part of the, the process. So it's just like finger tight. Once you can do it like this and it's not moving, you're good to go. Good to go. Super easy. You see? Okay, so just to um, explain to you these little, divot, these little notches, this tells you how high you need to have your water when you're pressure canning. So just so you know, you don't really need a lot of water. There's a line way down here. Of course, you can see I've used this a lot, but there's a line that's as much water as you need to can, and that's with double stacking. Just that much water, and then we're gonna put a splash of vinegar in that. Let's do this, man. Um, it's ready, it's ready, it's ready, it's ready. Oh, we're still almost to the line. Um, so we're going to take and put a splash of vinegar into our water. The reason why we do this is so we don't get cloudy looking jars. So that's the worst. It doesn't look really pretty. They're fine, okay. but they don't look pretty. So you put a splash of vinegar in there. Now, everybody's can is a little bit different. This is a Presto. So it does seven quarts. And I think it does like, I don't know, 18 pints. So I could double stack this and have do a huge batch at one time. But I'm actually going to focus on just doing these for right now. So on here, you see this little arrow right here. It tells you exactly where to line it. And then we're going to turn it all the way to high. What we're waiting for is for this little topper right here to pop up. So right now, I've just turned it on. I'm not going to put my little weight on. This doesn't go on until we have a steady stream for like 10 minutes. And I'll show you what that looks like. Right. So this is what you're looking for. So once this pops up, we know it's getting up to pressure, right? And if you see the steady stream, I don't know how much you can see. We want that for 10 minutes. Now, when it comes to our weight, this is the important part. It's based off your pressure of where you live. Like the pressure is based off where you live, like um, your elevation. So you need to know your elevation. You can look it up really quick on DuckDuckGo or something like that. So um, once that goes ahead, and for me, it's only 10 pounds of pressure. It's pints, so it's 75 minutes. So um, I know that I need to cook them for 75 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. I usually keep mine at about 11 to 12. And then my little weight will make sure I'm following all that. So yeah, so we are done now. And I went ahead and turned off my stove and we have to wait until this comes all the way back down to zero. If you take it off now, you can have an explosion and be a whole thing. You have steam coming out, boiling, make your things draw. It would just be a hot mess. So. Um, we gotta wait for that. That takes about a half an hour, maybe longer. I mean, it really just depends. But um, we have a ways before I can take it off. So I'll show it to you in the morning because I'm gonna shut this thing off. I'm just gonna let it sit in here overnight and um, take them out in the morning. All right, good night. Perfection. Right. not a very difficult. Where'd it go?